Hi friends, so today I'm starting lecture 35 on our helicopter dynamics course. And today I'm going to take a Bernoulli's equation based approach towards deriving the induced velocity in the far wake. And in the process, we are going to gain some insights into the pressure distribution along the flow field on the rotor. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. So let's return to our flow field diagram. And as usual, we have the rotor disk. We have the induced velocity through the rotor disk equal to V. Far downstream W, the rotor generates a thrust. And then you have the stations, zero far upstream, three far downstream, one on top of the rotor disk, and two below the rotor disk. So we are going to use this nomenclature to get the pressures now. So this is going to be P0, this is going to be P1, this is going to be P2, and this is going to be P3, which is P0 again. So Bernoulli's equation with which many people in engineering are familiar is one more way of expressing the momentum equation in a fluid. And in fact, if you look at any book, you will find that the Bernoulli equation can be derived from the Euler equation for incompressible flow. So if we look at this flow field now, we see that the pressure here is P0, here is P1, here is P2, and here again it is P0. So we cannot apply Bernoulli's equation between 0 and 3, for example, because at the rotor disk, energy is being put into the system. And Bernoulli's equation essentially would then not be valid if we cross the rotor disk. So what we are going to do is we are going to apply Bernoulli's equation between 0 and 1 on top of the rotor disk and between 2 and 3 below the rotor disk. So this we have to do because at the rotor disk, energy is put in. And that is the reason why the velocity goes up. And therefore, we are going to apply Bernoulli's equation between 0 and 1 and 2 and 3. So let's do that now. So between 0 and 1, we can write the Bernoulli's equation as P0 is P1 plus half rho v square. Okay. Remember, velocity at 0 is 0. So there is no velocity here. So we only have P0 here. And here we have P1. And then there is the half rho v square. Between 2 and 3, we have P2 plus half rho v square equals P0 plus half rho w square. So far downstream, the velocity is w. That's what we get here. And also the pressure is back to P0. And here the pressure is P2, the velocity is V. So we collect these two equations here, which we have obtained from the Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's formula. And now what we are going to do is we are going to use the fact that T by A is equal to P2 minus P1. Now that comes from the basic definition of pressure. So the difference in pressure across the rotor disk is going to be the truss divided by the cross section, pi r square in this case. So if we take these two equations, and let me take P0 in the first equation and put it in the second equation here, okay? And then I can get P2 minus P1. The half rho v squared terms will cancel out, so I will get P2 minus P1 equal to half rho w squared. So this then gives us the equation of T by A in terms of half rho W square. So that's the equation T by A equals half rho W square. And now we are going to go back to our mass conservation, which was M dot is rho AV. So I'm going to extract A from this mass conservation. So A would be M dot by rho V. 
and I'm going to plug it into the formula for T by A. So T by A becomes T by M dot by rho V and this is going to be equal to half rho W square. So from this I can then write T V equals half M dot W square because this rho went up, got cancelled here and the V went up and remained. Okay. So this is the equation we get. So that's the equation we have got from Bernoulli's equation. And also from momentum conservation, we already know that T is m dot w. That's the basic definition of trust we derived before. So using these two formulas, I take T is m dot, m dot w and I put it here. And if I put it here, I immediately get a cancellation of m dot and w. And so I get W equals to V. So this is the derivation of this formula W equals to V from the Bernoulli equation type of thinking. And here one of the advantages is that the equations we have derived while coming up with this formula can be used for obtaining the pressure field. So we are going to see that in our next lecture. See you then.